just wanted to say thank you guys for your time and for your um, amazing effort in this beautiful project. I thought it was really thank you. an interesting piece. You don't really see a lot of uh, pieces or depictions of sound and music done this way, especially with the interesting twist. I just wanted to uh, commemorate you guys and say thank you on that. Um, thank you so much. I would like to start off by, tell me about the process of turning it from the short of, uh, which was previously called Conductor into this feature length. Um, I mean, the short was a sort of cathartic uh, expression of uh, dealing with uh, making the, movie, the documentary 808 that I produced and, um, and, you know, about a drum machine for five years. So killing somebody with a drum machine was the cathartic expression of that. And I didn't intend it to be a feature uh, initially, but as we toured it and, um, and part of writing that, that short, I obviously created the character of Alexis and, um, and that's where the answers, the response we got in festivals about, about the film and about the questions I was getting about her um, meant that I was uh, rightly uh, obsessed and interested in developing her story going forward. And, um, and so, um, you know, kind of making abstraction of the short itself and really focusing on the character was really the, the route, I, the route I, 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 I chose. And, um, and I started by developing her backstory that I was almost thinking of doing as a second short. But then I started to come up with a journey going forward, um, an artist's journey with her inspiration and all those sound experiments that she, she uh, develops, which are very gruesome, but are artistic expressions. So it was, a, it was a, an interesting challenge and, and it happened incredibly fast as well, because we, I wrote the first draft of the script in January 2019 and, and, and we shot it in November, October, November 2019. Wow, okay. I, and so that kind of leads me into my second question. So you filmed the entire thing within the two months time span, is that correct? Uh, we, sh we shot it in 20 days. 20 days, wow, okay. It was <laughs> indie <laughs> filmmaking. It's uh, <laughs> and that's why that's why you know we have such a, a an amazing team that just everybody committed to 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 delivering this, and we and you know we knew that it was going to be tight, but you know it's, we didn't have the budget to really go beyond that, and uh, and it was a matter of just getting it done, and um, and everybody committed so much to to their belief in the story, and 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 uh, you know I, I, I like amazing people involved. Daphne, our cinematographer, Dave Jow, our, our line producer, that like my first AD. Um, Ifke and, and, and Buzz, it's like the, the, the team was just just bonded together and then in front of the camera, you know, Jasmine, Lily and James just kind of went, and Tessa as well, let's not forget Tessa, just went all in and really brought everything to life on, um, on, uh, on the good old indie film set with everything at stake and no time to I'll, I'll just say, just, just to, to put, set the record straight, you know, it's not like he ran a, a, a a slave troop or something you know we weren't made to work like 18 hour days it wasn't an internment camp you were, it was a very professional set it might have only been 20 days but it was run very tightly very professionally and uh, we were we were well supported and well looked after the entire time thank you i i tried i tried to take care of everybody and 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 to to make sure that everybody's as comfortable but but they also all took the 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 time pressure as as their own and, and really committed to it so yeah, it, it, it really took a, a you know, it's uh, it was uh, um, the conditions were as good as we could make them, hopefully, and then, but yeah, we <laughs> we took on that challenge, which kind of leads me into it. Um, from what I could dig up, James, you were in the original short, am I correct? No, no, no. okay, no. all right. So no. how was it uh, being called for this uh, indie that you were? It was. You know what, I, I, I was sent the script and I was kind of curious, I will say this much, because I, I read a few pages and I really had to go, I had to go back and read it again because I wasn't really sure if I was, what I was reading was the actual ac accurate thing that was on the page. And I was like, did I just, no, hold on. And I would have to go back and like really, I, and it was hard. It was hard for me. I feel I've got a really active imagination, but it was really hard for me to imagine like how this stuff was going to be done in any sort of realistic sense of it. So I was really curious, and and that was what I took into my meeting when I when I first met with Alex was really the curiosity that I had from from reading the script the first time because I just wanted to know like 
okay, so you've got this idea for this and this, and you want to put us in this situation. Like, how are you going to actually do that? And and uh, that's the really entertaining thing about about the film for me is is these kind of these uh, these kind of maniacal. Um, contraptions for want of a better word and um and yeah the the creativity and alex's script really spoke to me and i was really curious and um and certainly the opportunity to to act across from jasmine was definitely a draw uh, i was a big fan of hers from her uh, her performance in the leftovers and it was uh yeah it was really um i enjoy indie filmmaking because you feel like you're involved you feel like you're part of <laughs> you feel like you're part of the production, you know, you're not like sat on a chair in the side of the room and just brought in just for your one moment. You're there in this area with everyone, the entire, there's much more room for uh, collaboration. There's room for like listening to other people. There's room for learning in, uh, on, on smaller films, I think. And so that really attracts me to them. And I hope that I never become jaded from wanting to work on small indies. I, I've always enjoyed them and I hope, uh, hope that may, long it may continue. <coughs> that kind of uh, leads me into my next question. How was working with Jasmine? You guys both kind of mentioned her and I she's just incredible. Really impaled me from the, from the start. She kind of grabs your attention and then you just never let go from there. Well, I mean, the fact is, so a lot of credit needs to go as well to uh, Amy Renee, our, our, our casting director, because she um, she grabbed the script with both hands and really felt, the, she felt a stake in it and the, the potential with it. And and when she suggested that we spoke to Jasmine, I was like immediately excited because I love the leftovers and, and, and you know, she, when we met, it was, immediate connection, we really, and, and you know, there's many traits of the characters that I left as kind of open questions for exploration to make sure that, you know, the, the, we have authenticity in it. And, um, and Jasmine took that with her passion and her craft as, as something that she wanted to, to take forward. And, and I remember that ending that meeting feeling that I had just met Alexis and, um, and she has, her personality flies out of the screen and I think everybody's looking forward to seeing that as well in Scream and uh, and in her new show Yellow Jacket because she has it's in her eyes she has an ability to connect with people when we did scenes when we removed the silent scenes and we would not um, have the lines her ability to connect with her surrounding with with her eyes is just incredible so her her acting skills are, are, are phenomenal and she really challenged me um, to never let the character down as well. So it, it's, it, you know, it, she's, she's a pleasure to work with and she's, um, you know, a phenomenal actress. And, and you know, I probably if I, if I tried to make this movie today in the same condition, I probably not, would not even be able to get her because she is on such a <laughs> ascending uh, route. And I mean, and that can be said as well of, of both Lily and James as well. I mean, I, you know, there's moments where you when you sit down as a director and especially I've been a producer for 17 years but this is my feature uh, debut as a director and I just sat down and I was like this is this is I'm lucky I'm 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 in a good place right now and yeah so Jasmine was the point of contact which as everything happening organically with this film meeting Jasmine was a breakthrough and she um you know and and for all the the you know i came up with a character that that uh, had open questions for me because i didn't want to project anything and um and jasmine uh just embodied that that character was was incredible talent and i'm so so proud of her and then for james kind of the same question how was it working with jasmine as well um yeah i think it was it was uh it was a great experience. I mean, we met up, we had a read through before we started shooting and um, it was interesting because her relationship with uh, Lily was, they, they'd already been hanging out and messaging. So by the time we start my first day on the set, they're as close as can be. And it felt like a very natural dynamic anyway, where I'm naturally this kind of clunking third wheel in the room. And uh, I was able to fulfill that role to a T. Um, but Jasmine has a, a, a real air of professionality towards everything, you know, and she wants to break every scene up open and 
and like I said, we would give space for your your ideas to be able to be put forward in a scene and just is a, a really collaborative actor. So someone that just is always willing to always willing to work and explore things. And, and, and I think that's I think that's so important on a film of this nature where you really need these characters to kind of uh, stand up and be bigger than how they're written on the page. There was a few scenes that really stood out to me. I think one that really kind of, I guess, gravitated towards me, I would say, is the one with you and Lily at the art gallery. You guys kind of just, I guess, uh, it looked more so if you guys were actually on a real date as opposed to like um, <laughs> kind of just playing the role. How, how, was, how was that? Yeah, I mean, it was that scene is a is is a, was a lot, you know. It's a long mm -hmm. scene with a lot of moving parts, but it was great. And I think that yeah, the the start of that scene is a really fun thing to play, and it was just Duke kind of in his element, and this um, um, the whole kind of scene kind of falls apart from there, you know. And I think that that one for me was definitely a really really great day and I think that the kind of moment we have outside of the gallery that that moment for me is a really important beat in the kind of character's whole direction in the movie because it's just kind of like you just want to I just want to shake her at that point and you're like come on I saw the girl you know and you're just like get gaslit gaslit to this point where you just have to take it and be like okay I didn't see what I didn't what I did definitely see you know and that's such a a thing I think everyone who's uh, ever started dating someone's got to change something about their <laughs> like outlook. So I think that's a a do go for the first date kind of thing where you're like, no, no, I didn't see that. Like, don't worry, that didn't happen. Like, it's not it's not a raging alcoholic or something, you know. <laughs> like, it's a very uh, atypical first date vibe. We we got, actually we kept the, the camera rolling on a few moments where where um, uh, in between. The, the, the takes as well, the camera was rolling and which was good because it allowed, you know, as well, the natural chemistry between uh, James and Liddy to be able to, you know, a, a little bit of banter between the two of them that actually, um, there's one, one, one moment that actually is at the beginning of a, of a cut that we, we switch back and then, and then we hear James going, bad luck. And there's like, that's something that they were just like, you know, that was like just between them. And it was like, the, the interesting thing, because this scene is so pivotal as far as like the dynamic of that love triangle that I, um, you know, and, and it was a very long uh, day because we had a lot to shoot and there were so many moving parts um, in there that we had to, to really coordinate a lot. And um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very, it, it was a, a perfect challenge to create a scene where we have two characters interacting directly and we had to create the weight of a third one being there without being there. And then, you know, it, it, it's, it was, it, you know, the, it, it allowed the audience to know more than the characters in that scene. And therefore, um, and therefore we had, we had to, we had, we had to play a lot with that. And, and, and I, that, that was a tremendous fun day to, to kind of um, culminate a little bit the, the, the relationship between all the actors. And then just kind of to add on it, did you write it exactly how it went or did you kind of improvise as you went? Like, was it one of those things to where it was like, it's such gold and I know it's a long day, but let's just keep it here? I, I so I, we, um, I kind of overwrote uh, this scene, <clears throat> meaning that there were a lot more dialogue. There was, a, there was so much going on that, <clears throat> both um, James and Lily both said that like, you know, this conversation is too inflated. So I worked with them to kind of get it a little bit more natural and to be a little bit more in the moment and, you know, and have a drink and make it really casual. So um, that scene kind of really grew by being stripped back a little bit and then allowing the movements within the crowd and within the, the gallery to, to allow um, a bit more natural flow to it and um and james and lily were very um influential in that to to for me to get it right <coughs> sorry just two more quick questions one for james um your final scene in the rv with jasmine how did you really propel those emotions knowing what was forthcoming okay well 
I wouldn't say, I remember looking at it and I will, you know, I always try and do as much prep, but as Alex said, we had quite a short lead time. So the usual time of prep that I will get to like, go back and go back, uh, go back and look at it over and over and over again. I didn't really have that opportunity. And I remember actually coming into it feeling a little bit like, oh, this is going to be interesting because I haven't actually got this, as far as I'm concerned, totally planned out. And that lends itself to this type of filmmaking where there is so much room for creativity on the fly. And when you've got such a talented team of actors, such a talented team of crew, and you really can you really can make things better than they were supposed to be. And and certainly, I think by accidentally you can make some things a little worse sometimes too. But um, no, I think that I, I think that I certainly looked at it being like I need to be in some decent physical shape. I want to make sure I've stretched before this because I definitely wanted to be able to let loose and like not feel like um. um you know, it's 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 a really visceral, really real scene, and without too much spoiling, um, you know, I really hope that it 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 does give people chills. You know, it's a it's a really violent, really real, but real and visceral scene. And um, my God, yeah, yeah, the sound to get the room as well. That's, that's, that's the way Daphne managed to move around. <laughs> oh, okay. incredible because you know this is a tiny little rv we're in and with you know there's a lot of big action going on and she's really trying to like get the camera right where it needs to be also without getting like brain in the head with the camera or like you know a million other accidents that can happen when you're like having a, a fight in an rv and um yeah it really was it really was a testament to professionalism there daphne was definitely took a couple of hits but she she carried on shooting <laughs> yeah it was, it was a great scene I, I really appreciate it um so just my final question how was it being your uh premiere at south by southwest um i love south by i it's my second uh world premiere here um obviously it's uh it's it sucks to be to have it virtually because uh, Austin is awesome. The festival is awesome. The experience of being there, being with the audience as well, because the Midnighters um, screenings are crazy. You have like queues around the block and, and the audience, you feel everything with them and they will let you know. And the Q and A's are wild and so on. So that's a little bit of a bittersweet moment. But but regardless, you know, I never expected my movie to end up um, at South by, you know, with 808, we were, we were, you know, in a way with the sort of, the way it was packaged, it was it was, you know, may, maybe more expected. But with with this, I, I never thought it would be necessarily possible. And and you know, the short didn't get into South by, for example. But um, but the when I when I received the notification, I lost my mind, and uh, and I, I I just jumped up and down like a you know. And it, it's a thing, you know. I've been a producer for seventeen years, and maybe there's a healthy dose of cynicism that comes with that, but. I'm a rookie when it comes to being a director and uh, I worked with many directors and I've obviously, you know, tried to nurture directors, but now it's me. And I'm like, and so it's like really like a, a kid in a candy store and I was just bouncing up and down. Like I got the, the like, like I got the toy that I've always dreamt of kind of thing. And it just, you know, and the team, um, Jared sent me a personal email to, 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 uh, to tell me that we got in and, and um, and he said that the uh, end of the movie is one of the craziest end he's seen in years, and and you know all this they've done nothing but make me feel like I my movie really really belongs there, and and for somebody who's suffered from imposter syndrome before, I can tell you that that uh, the people at South by are when you're in, you're not just you know okay you're 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 movie number fifteen you know you're just like you're in you're part of this sort of movement and and with the virtual they've doubled the efforts to make sure that all our interactions are there we're on Clubhouse we're on all those um, chats and and uh, yeah I I just I can't thank them enough and uh, you know Janet and Jared and and the whole team have uh, just are incredible and and it's just this is just one of the best festivals in the world and having that seal of approval on my film is just a dream come true. Well. I don't want to take up too much of your guys' time. This was my first time at South by Southwest. It was amazing. We will be talking about uh, this film on our clubhouse a little bit later today. But I just want to thank you guys. You guys did an amazing job. Thank you for having us and having uh, me, Malik, and the rest of the Muse TV team a part of this. And I just want to thank you guys.
Thank you so much for, for having us too and for, for liking our crazy movie. <laughs>